Hello and welcome back once again to the OrcadX layout tutorial series. We've now made it to where we're going to look at setting up some basic constraints for our board. Again, my name is Adam Fuchs. I am a product engineer at Cadence Design Systems. And if you want to follow along for this video, be sure to download the how to underscore constraints board file. Or if you've been following along, you can set up the same constraints in your design if you so wish to. Now to get started, we have two goals for this video. The first is to set up some constraints to control the width of the different traces in our design. So maybe wider widths for power traces, narrower widths for signal traces. Likewise, if you're working on a more complex design that had differential pairs, you would need to make sure that you set up the appropriate widths and spacings for those. So Constraint Manager really is very powerful and you know, there could be a, a 30 minute to an hour video that focuses on all of the different features inside of it. We're just going to be looking at some of the basics for this design. And before we jump into it, the second goal is also to set up some constraints to control the spacing between the different traces or copper features in our design as well. So to access our constraints, we go into tools and run constraint manager. Now constraint manager, like I said, is a one stop shop for all of the different constraints in our design. So you'll notice on the left side here, we have electrical constraints. A lot of these are related to especially high speed constraints. So like your target impedance, propagation delays, etc. Our physical constraints is where you set up things like the line width, any sort of next that you might have defined for your different traces or what vias you want to use during routing. Then we have spacing and same net spacing. But for this video, we're going to focus on physical and spacing. So here we have physical constraint sets, which we're going to start at. And then we also have this section called nets and region. Now, the difference between these two is that a constraint set is kind of like if you're familiar with any sort of software development, a function. It's something that you can reuse throughout the constraining of your design. So you would edit a constraint set and then apply that constraint set, also known as a C set, to different nets or regions within your design rather than entering all those numbers one by one into each separate net, which can be quite tedious. And you'll kind of see that as we start entering the values in here. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is you'll notice that we already have a default constraint set. If a net or a region doesn't have a constraint set assigned, it'll automatically go to the default constraint set. We can create a new one by selecting right click, create physical C set. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this one power. Now for the power constraint set, notice that we can expand the constraint set and set different values for the line width and the neck based on you know, whether it's on a conductor layer, on a plane layer. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse these. As long as we set the value at this top level, that value will propagate down both into our conductor and our plane layers. That's just some more detailed control in case we need to have some very fine tuning on, for example, the line widths in our design. So for our power traces, we want our minimum line width to be 0.508 millimeters. Now, because our design is already in millimeters, you'll notice here it's in millimeters. I can just type in this without setting the units, press enter or tab to set the value. However, if I want to use mils, I can also do that and constraint manager will automatically translate that value. So for example, if I want my maximum line width to be 100 mil, I can type that in and that'll convert it to a maximum line width of 2.54 millimeters. Now for the neck, we're going to go ahead and set a neck. A neck is basically just a short segment where we're okay to allow a slightly narrower trace width, but we also then have to define how long we're okay with that trace width to be defined for. So in this case, I'm going to set this to 10 mils or 0.254 millimeter. Again, we're going to type this in mils and you'll see that it automatically gets converted. And for the max length, we're going to set that to five millimeters. So that is our power traces line with the next set. We're going to go ahead and add another constraint set. We're going to call this signal. And this is for all the signal traces in our board. For the line width, we're going to set this to 0.15 millimeter or about six mils. And for the max, we're gonna set this to 0.254 millimeters or about 10 mils. And for the neck, we're going to be okay with a five mil neck 
at a max length of, again, five millimeters. We have now our two physical constraint sets for power and signal. The only other thing that I want to add here is if we scroll over to the right, you'll notice that there's some additional rules here that we can set for differential pairs. Our design doesn't have any differential pairs. And then you'll also notice that some of these column headers are in yellow. That basically means whether or not the rule is turned on or off for checking. So to turn it on, you right click on the header and select analysis mode. And if we click away, you'll notice that it's now gray. So if it's yellow, the rule is turned off. If it's gray, it's turned on. Additionally, if you go under analyze analysis mode, you can turn on or off all of the different rules. In this case, we're looking at physical through these basic checkboxes. If you're unsure what any of the rules do, while you're in this analysis mode, if you hover over any of these, you'll notice that there's a little tooltip icon. Go ahead and hover over that. And on the right side, you'll see a nice little definition for what actually gets checked for these different rules. Now, what I wanna set here is the vias that we're allowing in our design. I'm gonna go ahead and double click. And here we can edit the via list, which we're allowing for all of the traces that are in the power constraint set. Now, I already know what I'm looking for. It's a via called route via. I can type in route and select it from this list by double clicking, adding it to the right side here. And this default via, I can remove it simply by double clicking it on this list over here. And then hit okay. Same thing for my signal traces. I'm gonna double click, look for my route via, and then remove the default via. Press okay. Now we're gonna leave the default via for the default constraint set. And that might be just a good way to tell if, you know, maybe we didn't assign something to a constraint set like we intended to. If we scroll further to the right, you'll notice that there's some additional constraints that we can set here for blind and buried vias, but that is out of the scope of our design. So now we need to actually assign these constraint sets to the different nets in our design. So we're going to head into this net section and you'll notice that every single net in our design is listed here. Now, if you do the work up front in the schematic, you can also have some of these nets grouped into, for example, buses, different classes, net groups, etc. But in our design, we just have them listed as individual nets. What that grouping allows you to do is then to just set a constraint set for that grouping rather than doing so one by one. But in our case, what we want to do is assign that constraint set to, for example, these different power nets we have here. So plus VBAT, plus VDD core, etc. I can do so by highlighting in this physical constraint set section. And then you'll notice that the drop down appears and we can select the power constraint set. And then in this line with the neck columns, notice that the values were automatically entered in here as our uh, constraint set defined them. Likewise, for ground, we want to treat that as a power net. And then those values will automatically get propagated. Any entry in this table that is not the default will be highlighted in blue. Likewise, if we have a net, for example, this uh, plus V USB, which has a constraint set assigned to it, Maybe just for this specific net, we want to make this a little more constrained. So let's set this to 0.6 millimeters, for example. Now this value will appear in blue. That's just a nice visual indicator so that you can see that, hey, the value has been changed and isn't the standard or the default that you would expect. To change it back to the default in this constraint set, simply right click and select clear, and that'll set it back to this constraint set. Now for the rest of these, again, we can highlight by left clicking and then shift clicking. We're going to assign these to the signal constraint set. Select, and then let's scroll all the way down. Signal. Signal. Now again, in a much larger design, some of these would be grouped into buses. For example, this data bit zero through data bit seven, those might be a bus. Some of these SD 
MISO, MOSI, zero clock, et cetera, might be in a net group. And then you can just assign the constraint sets to those groups. Okay, so we've gone ahead and set our physical constraint sets. Let's head into our spacing. So spacing works the same way. We have a constraint set that we can define in this constraint set section. And then we can assign those constraint sets to different nets, to different classes or class to class relationships, to regions, or even interlayer spacing if we need to. So let's jump into the constraint sets, all layers. And we're going to set the spacing to about 0 0.15 millimeter for our signal nets and 0 0.254 millimeter or 10 mils to our power nets. So we're going to create the same two constraint sets for spacing. We're going to call this power and we're going to create a new one called signal. For our power nets, we want the spacing. You'll notice that we can just set all for line two, set all for through pin two, set all for SMD pin two. And where you see this little arrow, you can double click and see all of the options in this column for line two. You'll notice that there's options for line to line, line to through pin, line to SMD pin, line to test pin, all the different options available you can set. Let's go ahead and collapse that. And we wanna set this to, what did I say? 0.254 millimeter and then we're just going to copy that and paste it throughout and you can use the keyboard shortcuts control c control v and that will work just fine and then for our signal let's go ahead and enter in here that we want to use six mil or 0 0.15 millimeter and again we're gonna copy that and paste it and I'm just click and dragging here to select multiple cells in the spreadsheet. So now we can assign these constraint sets to different nets in our design. Same thing. Notice that all of those same options are available in this spreadsheet. But again, this can be quite tedious to fill out one by one. So instead, we're just going to assign those constraint sets to these nets. And there we go. So now our whole design is more or less constrained, at least from a trace width and spacing perspective, we can go ahead and close Constraint Manager. And if we refresh our DRCs, we'll notice that it is now up to date. And we start to see that there's already some DRC errors. Let's just check that out. Here we can see that there's through pin to through pin spacing issues that are showing up. And you can see the required value is 0.254 millimeters and our actual value is 0.2 millimeters. So we might actually have to adjust that a little bit because in our design, there are some, some pins which already break those rules. I think if we set our value to 0 0.15 millimeter or the six mils throughout, that should work just fine. So let's jump back into Constraint Manager. This power constraint set is going to stay assigned even if I make changes to the original constraint set. So if I jump back into the spacing constraint set under the all layers section for my, or actually for all of these, let's go ahead and highlight them. Let's say that I also set this to 0 0.15 millimeters. So 0 0.15 millimeter, and we're gonna copy this value and paste it in all of these. Now, if I jump back into my net section, you'll notice that that value gets automatically updated. So it's a great way to organize the constraints in your design because you only really need to change your constraint sets once they're all assigned to the different nets, regions, classes, etc. in your design. 
Okay, again, let's close Constraint Manager, refresh our DRC, and now we're back to just one error. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward with these constraints. Our spacing is set to six mils or 0 0.15 millimeters throughout the design. Again, the highest voltage in our design is five volts. So that should be plenty of space. And then our power traces, we have 0 0.5 millimeters as the minimum trace width and 0 0.15 millimeters is the minimum trace width for our signal traces. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and start doing some layout based on these constraints which we've set up. So I will see you in that video. Take care.